Check one, two. Hey guys, what's up? Let's make this video talking about a very important question. I find there's a lack of information on the internet regarding this topic, and it is talking about market depth and level two data. Do you need it or do you not need it? What is it good for? What is it useful for or not useful for? And what's the point behind it? Simply, let's talk about it, okay? So level two data, basically all it is, it's showing you the limit orders that are available in the market. Limit orders to sell above a price, limit orders to buy below a price. That's it, that's all level two data is, okay? Now, how does that help your trading? Well, people have mixed feelings about this. I, I'm mixed about it in the sense that limit orders in the market do not help my trading. They do not. I trade based off of charts and based on of analyzing the psychology of a market, crowd behavior. So that's the number one thing to start. And if you can find a way to use level two to kind of accentuate your trading style, then it could work for you. Now, brokerage firms make a lot of money from selling level two data to individual traders. Okay. So that's the bottom line here. Now, I trade with interactive brokers and they have three. For the US equities, they have the three big exchanges, the NYSE, the ARCA, and the NASDAQ. Now, do you need all three of them? I think it's unlikely you need all three of them unless you are a big trader. And by big, I mean huge. <laughs> so basically, look, this is, is this Facebook stock. Okay, you can see the NASDAQ total view. So Facebook trades on the NASDAQ. So I'm able to see that there's at least a lot of shares on the bid and a lot of shares on the ask here. One means 100. So just do whatever number you see here times 100. If you look at the ARCA book, it does add a little bit of liquidity to that. But that little bit of liquidity that's being added is not necessarily helping your trading in any way. All right. And we do know that just the liquidity you're seeing on the level two here, that doesn't mean that that's all the liquidity available in the market either, because there are dark pools and other exchanges that institutions can make transactions without necessarily moving the price significantly, like dark pools, like I said, and uh, and basically like kind of sweep orders. Like if a fund just comes through and they know that there's a lot of liquidity under a certain price in Facebook, and when Facebook targets that price, retail is going to start panicking and selling. You cannot see that on level two, and neither can you see the institution coming in and, and absorbing all those orders. You can't see that. You can see that on the tick chart. And that's what happened today on Facebook, by the way, is when Facebook was ticking 205, it had broken the low of the day, and it was just literally ticking sideways for 10 minutes straight right after it broke the low of the day. And that was something so interesting to watch. And there were big orders coming through on the bid. I mean, big size that was showing up here on the bid just under 205. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there was a lot of buyers. What was telling you that there was a lot of buying is because the price kept ticking at 205 and it was trying to push lower. Nope, push lower. Nope. And it kept ticking like that for 10 minutes. So that's what you call price absorption. So level two can be useful to identify that in some occurrences. But keep in mind that once they drop the bid, I mean, once they stop buying, Facebook dropped aggressively below 205, and that was a great opportunity to take a trade, in my opinion. Anyhow, so did I use level two to understand that? No, actually, all I needed was the tick chart. The time and sales basically tells you all the info you need, and you don't have to pay for any tick chart data because that's basically just the volume flow coming into the market. That's the order flow coming in, all right? So with interactive brokers, you can subscribe to the NYC ARCA or the NASDAQ, but I don't think, in my opinion, you need all of them, okay? If you trade the US equities, probably you need the NASDAQ and that's it, because the NASDAQ has a lot of volume trading on it every day. So I guess that's, um, it's a matter of what you trade, I guess. So again, using another example for trading, how could level two help your trading? Let's say you're trying to look, you're, you're trying to expect a breakout on a stock, okay? Let's say you're willing to buy a breakout. Now, whatever, that's, this is, trading strategies are unrelated to this video. Let's just say you're looking to buy a breakout. Price breaks above your level, it breaks out, you can see the bid and the ask. Now, how does the bid and the ask help you? If you see a lot of orders coming in on the ask and you're trying to buy a breakout, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a lot of sellers trying to sell against that breakout or sell into that breakout. It doesn't necessarily mean anything because sometimes market makers like to show liquidity, especially at even numbers. They put 100 there, they put 200, they put these 
big iceberg size orders and then at any moment they take them out and then the price goes flying in one direction so just because you're seeing that size there it shouldn't give you a trading direction bias you shouldn't say okay you're trying to buy the breakout above ten dollars it ticks at ten ten dollars and five cents now you see a huge order coming in at ten dollars and seven cents a huge sell like maybe like a million shares or something it doesn't necessarily mean that someone's actually trying to sell a million shares at those prices that's basically what i'm trying to get across here is that market makers like to play around with that stuff and they show orders here they show orders there just to kind of mess with you what you need to understand is where there is potential liquidity in these markets that's the number one thing if you can try to figure out where the liquidity is you don't really need to look at this level two and get confused about how many shares are available at what price the only thing level two is useful for is if you're a big trader and you need to know where you're positioning yourself right so if you if you're looking like these big institutions that are looking at like buy a million shares of facebook they need to know where the that that flow is going to be coming in you know if they know that the retail there's going to be a lot of retail panicking once facebook breaks the low of day today they know that if they're looking to be buyers they're going to be buying in into that flow and that's what you call absorption like i like i said earlier so level two data itself doesn't really help you much that's the point of this video and that's what i'm trying to get across here and uh yeah so if you learned something from this video please give me a thumbs up and yeah okay so one last thing i wanted to show you is that with interactive brokers let's pull up an option here facebook option expiring today let's say 205 puts um you can see here i do not have any subscription to the options markets of interactive brokers this is just by default this here others that's just by default and I can see that there's at least a few hundred contracts on each side available at the bid and the ask. I can see the best bid and best offer. So in my opinion, do you need a level two subscription for options? No, I don't think so. Unless you're trading big size, like I told you before, if you're trading over a thousand contracts, then you might need to see more liquidity. You want to know where, where there is, where it's positioned. Because you know that with options, if you pull in a market order to buy, a, you shouldn't be doing that person. <laughs> if you pull a market order to buy a thousand contracts, market maker is going to rip you off. Okay, so always use limit orders most of the time, unless the spreads are tight. Okay, guys, if you learned something from this video, thumbs up for you. Okay, bye.